Hi, I'm Anna Raimondi. I'm coming to you from the Angel Cooperative in Ridgefield, Connecticut. Welcome to this episode of Talking to the Dead in Suburbia. I am so excited to welcome my guest today, Susie Miller. You probably know Susie. Um, you probably <laughs> love Susie. Um, she's an internationally known author, columnist, and entrepreneur, publisher, and pioneer of the internet. She is the respected founder of Astrology Zone. You've probably read lots about her in many magazines and her astrology columns. Um, she is distributed around the world. She is so phenomenal and such a pioneer into this field. Um, you can um, go to her app, Daily Horoscope, Astrology Zone, and more by Susie Miller. You can get her calendar um, there. She's just out there and wonderful and, and helping oh. us all. Um, so um, welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Yeah, Susie? Anna, what's really interesting is my mother used to call me Susie, and nobody knows that. Well, you know you're And you're the only one who has, <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> but if they're searching on the internet, it's Susan Miller, but thank you. It's a very soft, loving, affectionate way <laughs> to talk well, about me, and thank you. <laughs> your, mother, your mother is always around you. You know, I, I loved her so oh. much. I loved her in 2012, and I think oh. of her every day. <laughs> big, you know what I mean? She's a tiny, beautiful, gentle energy with a power oh. behind her. Oh, thank you. Oh. Yeah. Oh, wow. You're feeling that. That. Thank you. Yeah. And she, wants she was know. little. Yes. <laughs> but not in personality. She wasn't because she's been pushing through to me since last night. She's so proud of you, Susie. So really. Proud of you. Because oh, wow. Thank you. And I don't know anybody who does what you do. So thank you. You're the <laughs> Okay, so getting back to totally you. Um, how did you learn astrology? How did this did it just come to you? No, 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 no. Well, first of all, it's not a gift. Anyone can learn it, but they must study for a long time. My mother was an astrological scholar. She never did consultations. She just kept reading and reading. When I was born, I was born defective. Something was wrong with my left leg. Nobody knew what was it was, but I would get attacks where I'd be in excruciating pain. I, let's say we were walking down the street. I would feel a volume of thick liquid like chocolate syrup. I would tell the doctors, fall from the hip into the knee. And it, I, I had colors for pain. White pain was the worst. And I'd have to go immediately home. I couldn't put any weight on that leg while I was getting home quickly. And I'd go to bed for six weeks. I would have to put a pillow under the knee. If I didn't, it would lock and it would be harder to get well. Um, the doctors couldn't figure it out. They would say everything from I needed a psychiatrist and didn't want to go to school to um, let's cut around the back of the leg. I mean, it was all over the place. My mother said to me, when you're 14, this will go away. And I said, I don't know, Mama. I don't know. She said, it will. You won't think about it anymore. It will be over. Well, I got the biggest attack of my life at 13 and a half. I went to the hospital actually two weeks after my birthday and uh they had to do surgery because all the tests were coming up we don't know what it is i was bleeding internally the chocolate syrup i was feeling was excessive blood and be i was lucky because the leg will contain the bleeding they said if you had it in the lungs or the head one one episode and you would have died my veins were so thin on that side of the body that they were like tissue paper and would vanish. A surgeon's nightmare. In my life, I've had 40 blood transfusions. They didn't want me to have children. I had to sign my will to have Chrissy and Diana, my two daughters, for the light of my life. But I mean, it was a big ordeal and I was paralyzed during that first operation when I was 14. And all I wanted to know is, will I walk again? Of course, my mother would read my chart constantly, but I wanted to read my chart. And I kept begging her to teach me astrology. And she said, look, this is not a parlor game. This is something serious. 
if you're going to study astrology, you must study 12 years or you won't be any good. She had studied with uh, the Rosicrucians in California. We were always in New York. It was a correspondence class with her sister. She didn't want to study astrology. Her sister talked her into it. My mother was very good with math. And my sister, her sister needed her to do the charts. There were no computers then. And uh, she had studied for eight years, but continued to study. And uh, boy, she was right about the age 14. But the problem is I had a new, a new situation where the drop foot couldn't feel anything at all. So I was in the hospital 11 months and then went into physical therapy for two and a half years. I never attended high school. The Board of Education works with kids like this. They sent a teacher to my house for two hours once a week. One for English, one for math. I changed it to two hours of math. I could teach myself English. When I got done with that, I went to NYU at age 16 and I studied business because my father said, when this ordeal is over, you're going to have to get a job someday. I said, you can say that again, daddy. So he said, major in business, you'll always work. So we have a very practical family. So I did. <laughs> I majored in business and I graduated most likely to succeed, which is no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> so, um, it was a long journey, but I continued to study astrology. It would be 20 years before I would charge for a chart. You know, you get a lot of uh, young people studying astrology and they're starting to charge after six months. You need a lot of experience. And also you need to be accredited by one of the three clubs, the National Council for Geocosmic Research, the American Federation of Astrologers, or the International Society of Astrologic Research. That's where I got my accreditation, ISAR, I-S-A-R. But um, there's clubs all over the United States, all over the world. So you should join one. <laughs> and that's a good way to learn. Yeah, <laughs> I'm know, talking to your listeners. <laughs> you know, you know you do. <laughs> so interesting, as you say, it's not a calling. You know, like, so what I do is something I was born with, um, didn't have to, I mean, I've studied other things in my life, but this isn't, you know, being a medium isn't one of them. So like the way you describe astrology is more kind of academic. Okay. Do you use it? Yes. There's a lot of math and a lot of cracking symbols. When two symbols come together, what does it mean? You know, what's your interpretation and what is your own empirical research? You know, and you should stay with what the ancients wrote but of course the ancients only knew about planets up to saturn they didn't know about uranus neptune and pluto so that was added later with a lot of discussion a lot of white papers and a lot of um, you know agreement about what each planet would rule looking at events in the world when that planet was born into our consciousness <laughs> do you follow your own chart? Do you do? Oh, of course, chart? of course. And the same. Yeah, pattern? yeah. I I look at my daughters and uh, yeah, astrology works. Yeah, that's Gosh, Diana's won five Emmys. Five. <laughs> She's I mean, the music great producer. About that is I can't read for my family. I can't. There's like really. This, yeah, there's like this privacy barrier between me and them. So I can't read for my kids, my oh. husband, my mother, you know, I, I can't. It's just- I didn't know that. That's yeah, so which, interesting. Yeah, I think that, you know, the way the universe works is that maybe I would know too much. Um, maybe it would break up our relationships, who knows? Um, but I, I just, I can tell them who's around them, but I really can't get any in, information at all. Oh. Well, you, you're very sensitive and, and uh, yeah, it's, well, this is good to know. I mean, they, they, then they don't ask you. <laughs> That's good. You yeah, know, it, don't ask. it was very interesting when they were dating. Okay. Or when <laughs> college. But I would have liked to have known, tapped in, what are you doing? And eh, this didn't work. Didn't work. Well, you know, I have to tell you a funny story. Uh, having two girls in the house, uh, when they were still living here and they were, older teenagers uh it, for some reason this generation goes out in groups 
And this one young man came over and they were still combing their hair. They were almost ready. And he said, I found a way to pick up girls. I said, well, you better tell me. <laughs> Maybe my readers are doing the same thing. Tell me. He said, I, I find a girl at a party or at a bar who is, you know, interesting. I want to talk to her. And I go over to her and I say, do you read Susan Miller? And they, they go, you're such an enlightened man. Isn't that great? And they look up what I wrote and they talk about it together and it breaks the ice. And she shares some information. Yes, I am looking for a job or whatever, a new apartment. And they talk and they said, it's so nice. And I'm like, whoa, that, I'm speechless. I don't know that's what to great. say, but you know, that's very nice that you shared that with me. <laughs> so I thought that was very creative. Actually, I have 40, about 40% 40 males reading astrologyzone.com. That's really yeah, well, you know, wanting to know the future is not a girl thing. Uh, in the ancient days, it was the kings and very wealthy families who had the means to have an astrologer come to them because usually it was the mathematician in a nearby college or university on horseback. They'd have to get there and home back to the school within a day. So they could afford th their services. Now it's on the internet. Everybody has it and that's it's a good thing it's not a um you know privilege anymore no. anybody can have an astrologer but um yeah men want to know the future too and yeah. we're living in times where <laughs> people yeah. definitely want to know what's around the next corner well you know that being said what's going on with the toward the end of the year what i mean do you have any well there's something very big coming and i'm pretty excited about it it comes on December 21st. It's the meeting of Jupiter and Saturn. Now, when you look at the planetary lineup, they're in the middle. So they're kind of in the Goldilocks area. They don't move so fast like Mars or Mercury or Venus, where in three weeks they're already through a sign. They're not in the outer field where Uranus takes seven years to go around the sun. Pluto takes 248 years to go around the sun. So it's not those slow moving. Jupiter takes a year. Saturn takes two and a half. It feels three years though because it retrogrades in and out three years. So their meeting you say, well, how often do they meet? They meet every 20 years. And when they meet, they only meet usually once. And uh, they're meeting on December 21st and they're, they're going to have dinner. <laughs> and when they meet, they color all of society and politics, fashion, uh, theater, literature, TV shows, everything for the coming 20 years. Now, what's interesting is for the past 200 years, and our country is only about 243 years old, I have to look it up. But modern society as we know it is really a little over 200 years old. And they always met in earth signs. Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus, over and over and over. That every time they met, bingo, they were an earth sign. What did we accomplish in the past 200 years? Roads, bridges, tunnels. We laid down railroad tracks. We started the Industrial Revolution. We started the assembly line. Uh, all things that we know today were started then. Skyscrapers, cathedrals. It was a pretty exciting time. Now, except for one exception, which I'll get to in a minute, for the first time they're meeting in Aquarius, which is an air sign. And in the next 200 years, they're only going to meet in air, which is Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, over and over. That is going to change society inside out and backwards. Now, I said that there was one aberration. It was in 1980 when they met in Libra, which is an air sign. And then in 2000, they went back to Taurus, which is an earth sign. So I kept thinking, why does the universe always give us a little periscope, a little inkling, and the universe has been giving us several of those, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Why? 
And I realized the baby's born in 1980, plus or minus five years, 1975 to 1985, will be the ones that bring us into the new era because they're born with that in their DNA. They understand it the best. So what will be the difference? When you have earth, it's what you own that matters. When you have air, it's what you know and contribute that matters. Now, we got another little signal on March 20th when Saturn went into Aquarius and stayed until July 1st. Well, that's when we went into lockdown in New York on March 20th. Most cities did if they were having trouble with the virus, at least on the East Coast. And it stayed until July 1st. And what was happening? We were all working out of home, which is a very Aquarian thing to be alone. But then they like to work in groups too. And uh, the virus needed a vaccine. So instead of competing with each other, we were working together in groups. We were working with England. We were working with Denmark. We were working with different countries, their labs. And because of Watson, that big computer by IBM, the, uh, the white papers were coming on everybody's desk the day they were printed. And the whole process of developing the vaccine was speeding up because of the technology we had. Now, what's coming? Well, we, ha we know about CRISPR. CRISPR will be able to take out of DNA the things that have made people suffer, the birth defects that people are born with, more genetic things you know, that, that uh, people have that are, are serious. We'll be able to eradicate that. Uh, I think we are gonna be working home more, which is a great thing for women, because we all know that when the babysitter doesn't come, our life collapses. <laughs> and hopefully we have a backup, but yet sometimes the backup can't come. So uh, it's a different world, and it's gonna be a world where we all help each other. Now, I feel next year, governments will be tapped out of money. We are doing deficit spending at horrific levels. And uh, Jerome um, Powell was on television. He's director of the Federal Reserve Bank. And he said, we have to pay all this back, you know. I can loan money, I can't give money and not get it back, that's the rules. So we'll have to pay all that money back over the next 12 years, he said, through taxes. We're gonna have to. Uh, but it was an emergency. People needed money, and they still do. And I think there will be one more stimulus package before that. So next year, there isn't going to be any money from government, but Aquarius likes to help others. It is one of the signs that's very sensitive to those who suffer. And they will put together groups and foundations to help. Suddenly, helping your neighbor will be far more important than buying another handbag. Isn't Do you know what I mean? And uh, it's a nice influence. I, I like it. And uh, it, yeah, we are going to have flying taxi cabs, which terrifies me. I'm on the 29th floor up here. Oh, I would <laughs> love that. If I, I can't go them. by my window. But, um, you know, and th there'll have to be a lot of re-education as what happens every time a society walks over a transom. And we're kind of lucky to see this because most people don't aren't alive in the middle of the two eras, uh, but they'll have to be re-education. You know, I was talking to a friend, you have to give the market what it wants. I used to be in the photography business. I was an agent for commercial photographers and we were all bemoaning the, the shift from beautiful film and gorgeous skin tones to digital, which couldn't really match film at all. And we're like, oh, why don't clients see it? But you know what? Digital is fast and cheap and, and the market wanted it. I went into cars because cars had to be photographed and they're extremely expensive. So they were willing to do film, an eight by 10 film, beautiful film. So you have to wiggle around when there's a change. You either give the market what it wants or, well, you have to do that, but find a way that you aren't giving up your values. <laughs> I don't even know how to drive, but I went into 
selling, you know, beautiful car photography, uh, you know, for advertising with my partner. Uh, she was in the business with me and she would go out on the actual shoots in the Canadian Rockies and so forth. And I'd be here watching the budget and writing the estimates, but it was fun. And then uh, Time Warner came to me and asked me if I'd write down everything I knew about astrology. I said, on, on your website? They said, yes, on, on our website. You're going to meet the, um, the webmaster. And I met him in July of 1995. He said, write me a proposal. I like what you're saying. Because they wanted something short for women every day. And I said, no, it should be long for men and women every month. He thought it was a little crazy, but I explained why. You know, because I needed to show the detail. And I needed to convince the reader of why I was saying what I was saying. Because I always say in my mind, the reader's saying, so what? Why should I believe you? So I put in why you should believe me. <laughs> and he loved what I wrote. And so I went live on December 14th, 1995. That's almost right. 25 years ago. Next month, it will be 25 years. But I left Time Warner after three years. Disney wanted me. I licensed my material to them another three years. But the day before 9-11, I went independent. Okay. And I, I hired my own team and you know, to get I back my own calendars. <laughs> what you were yeah. saying before about next year, I mean, I'm an Aquarius. Um, so to, oh, you're going to be right in the center. Yeah, I'm an Aquarius. What day, what day is your birthday? February 8th. Okay, so you're in the middle. So you'll start to feel it a few years down the road. The ones born in January, uh, Amy... Comey Barrett is born January 28th, so she'll feel it immediately. You know, the baby's born in January, we'll feel it. Now what's happening next year is Saturn is going into Aquarius for the first time in 29 years. So think back 29 years, what happened 29 years ago? And Jupiter is following Saturn. They're, they're like two little twins coming in together. Now that's good because it softens the, you know, Saturn, Saturn can be a tough taskmaster, but Jupiter is the giver of gifts and luck and good fortune. So he'll be with Saturn and he'll make that entry easy. But uh, Jupiter's moving very fast next year and he's moving into Pisces. Um, and that will, whoa, <laughs> Pisces will love it. But so will Aquarius because they'll make money, good money in um, from uh, May, middle of May, around Mother's Day, until the end of July. Then it goes back, uh, Jupiter goes back to Aquarius, which you'll love, and it will stay there until the end of the year. And then Jupiter will go back to Pisces and finish out his tour of duty in 2022 for Pisces, which is really Pisces' biggest year. But it's, um, it's a year, there's, there's something going on that's interesting next year saturn and uranus are not getting along they are clashing they're banging and, and thumping around the heavens uh, saturn rules everything that's valuable from the past uranus rules everything that should be innovated and changed and made new and they're you know they're not getting along so as a society but also in our own lives We'll have to decide, okay, what do I like about my life? What do I want to keep? And who are the people I want to keep very close? But what needs to innovate? What do I have to do to modernize my life? Do I need to go back to school? Do I need to change my job? Do I love my job? Great. What can you bring? What creativity can you bring? Um, do I like where I live? Do I want to stay? Yes. Okay, good. Do you want to fix up your apartment or do you want to let it go and find a different one? You know, we're, we've all had a year of meditating, really. It's almost like nature said, time out. You all have to go home and think. <laughs> and Governor Cuomo said, we're going to go back into society, but it doesn't have to be the same. Think about how you'd like it to be different. He said, when I go to work, I hear the birds chirping. I see a blue sky. I'm reading that the Earth's crust is healing. You know, this, this is a good thing. I keep feeling, you know, along with what you're saying, this is, we're going through a spiritual awakening. Some people will wake up and some people won't. And as we move into next year, after having this year kind of behind us, 
going into next year. It's what did you learn? You know, so you may not want yes. to stand bad. So you important. Want connection. What did you learn? What did you learn? And, you know, and what has, you know, so you work with, you know, the planets and I work with the angels and God and the universe. Yeah. What did you learn? This is a going back to who we are supposed to be because if we operate from this being of complete love, what aren't we doing? You know, a lot of it is not just about connecting with our families, but ourselves. Like how much do you love yourself? And do I need, do I need to stay or do I need to go? Like how, <laughs> are we you know, it's that kind yeah. of thing. And you I know that that's important. That is, I love it that you said that because I think after every crisis that we go through in our lives, we should say, okay, what, what valuable things did I That's learn? What I learned. Experience? Even if it was a dreadful experience, right. like your business partner stole from you or, or your, your marriage fell apart because your husband was, you know, seeing someone else and for a long time and you didn't know, it. but what did you learn from mm -hmm. it? Sometimes what you learn is that you're a lot stronger than you thought you were. Yeah, but, it's part of <laughs> you know, but, but there's usually a lot of things you learn. And yeah. you should maybe even write them down. It's part because, of your life journey. It's it makes you better and stronger. You know, like like with all the things that have happened in your life. You know, if you weren't, you know, stuck in a bed, you probably <laughs> wouldn't have learned astrology. And you, well, it opened my heart. Yeah. And, it, and, you're not, and you're able to be compassionate. No with other people so you know to me everything oh it was all good it was meant yeah. and because i couldn't walk i couldn't get out of the bed at all i was dependent on my mother to be you know even to get my textbook across the room i couldn't i yeah. couldn't move an inch so nature slammed us together yeah. <laughs> but i loved her so much because she was my cheerleader and you're going to walk you're going to walk and, she and you know is. she's beautiful she always, Oh. Kind of, but beautiful. She's absolutely, I mean, she radiates. She's oh. smart. I got to tell you, this woman is wicked smart, wicked smart. And she's saying, you are so much like her, so much. Oh, yeah. I, I look like her. I have dark hair and dark eyes, well, hazily eyes, but she had blue eyes and chestnut hair. But in black and white pictures, we look identical twins, you know. And she really yeah, and I think we're similar. That. Your father wants you to know he loves you. Okay. Oh, much. I love him too. He's showing I love them both, you know. He's so. carrying bushels of food. I don't know what he's doing with this food, but bushels well, of food. He was an Italian specialty grocer. Oh, okay. He had a beautiful store and he was a magnificent produce dealer. And he was very social. And I'm, I'm and persistent. I learned how to be a really good cook because we had the store, right? We lived over the store. <laughs> You know in Manhattan, you know. But he's saying you're, you're in abundance, okay? Like, oh. he brings this food to you to say that you're in abundance. So I got to ask oh. you, how have you been doing during this pandemic? How has this affected Well, you? well, first of all, writers are used to being home a lot, but I miss, you know, my friends make fun of me. I love to write in Dunkin' Donuts because the, the uh, tables are lower than in Starbucks and that it's less noisy than in Starbucks. The espresso machine is very noisy in Starbucks, but I like to write there or in cafes that don't make you leave right away. You know, you can order a coffee and have a muffin and then maybe a little bit later have a salad. You know, they, the ones that let you stay. And I miss that so much because I'm in the same place all the time. You know, we're really, in hibernation here in New York City. Um, Mr. Fauci, my favorite scientist, said, do not go to New Jersey, do not go to Connecticut, you're staying home. Yeah, so I, mean, I even canceled uh, Thanksgiving. I'm just having it with one daughter. We feel Diana uh, should not come back from LA, and not even for Christmas. We'll send tons of presents, we'll call all the time, we'll be on FaceTime all the time. But you know, it's just too dangerous. And it's dangerous for me too. You know, so I have an autoimmune, I have ulcers. So I really have to be careful. I want to live. Yeah, like all <laughs> and of staying us home is. has been the easiest thing. I've been cleaning closets. I've become a little oh more God, so clean now. Wrote that book. That's an, uh, isn't that another thing that this did? It helped us purge. You know, I have given away, I'm not kidding, between clothes and furniture. 
I, it's got to be 40, 50 bags worth of stuff. Like, you know, yeah. like, who knew I had all this stuff? I didn't even know. I, and I'm still cleaning out closets. Because right. even after you clean them, you say, okay, now I want to look in all the boxes. And, right. you know, really, it's, so, uh, it's, it's a so good annoying. thing. It's purging. We're purging. We need. We really do need to get rid of what doesn't serve us, you know. Um, yes. And it's very exciting. And it makes you calm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but my prayer is that all this anger, all of this, goes oh. away, and we just get to a place where we can learn to be compassionate and to love each other. We've been through this hell of COVID, okay? And yes. those who survived, we should be thanking God that we are still here, so. Absolutely, and uh, I know it's been a tough month because of the election and the, um, I think pretty soon they'll pick a president and we just all have to come yes. together and try to support him. And he knows his way, uh, well, if it's Biden, he knows Mitch McConnell very well. It's not like it's somebody new for him. And uh, I think he could uh, come up with some really great programs and maybe Mr. Trump, if he gets it, will come up with some ideas that he hasn't really presented right now, except he was going to get jobs, but more detail. And, um, you know, we just have to move together because we are the United yeah. States. And yeah. I think the Aquarian yeah. mood yeah. will help us, you know, it will. Well. well, this year marks Astrology Zone's 25th anniversary. And you're releasing soon um, your year ahead calendar with the most important astrological dates. Listeners should Well, you know, I, um, this is my last year's calendar. Oh, I use Isaac, Isaac Zanu. Isaac Zanu is my illustrator. And uh, he just finished all of Estee Lauder's holiday gift boxes. And you can see it on Macy's website. And he's, He's French and he loves women. <laughs> and I love the way he depicts women. So he's finishing the sketches. I'm finishing the writing. Then it goes into edit for a few days and then we go to press. I publish it myself. So the only place you can get it is on astrologyzone.com. But I have a brand new app. That's what I did during the pandemic. I met the company, I, I looked at 10 companies in February and March. And when I looked at the first nine, I still wasn't feeling it. And my agent out in, um, in Los Angeles said, there's one more company I want you to see. Can you jump on a play? And so I did on March 12th, which was pretty scary because the curtain was coming down. But I did love that last company. And we made the agreement. We went through legal pretty quickly. Uh, I had two lawyers look at it who didn't know each other just to speed the process. Everything was really good. I gave the deposit. And we brought the app to market on August 28th on both the Apple App Store and Google Play. And we did the whole thing over Zoom. Now, I'm touchy-feely. I would have liked to have been there. But we looked at everything very clearly. They also sent me uh, what they call wireframes, which are the pictures of every screen in FedEx on glossy paper, thick paper. And my agent and I made notes of what we'd like to adjust. And it was just so exciting the day we went on the Apple App Store. And I have a 4.7 rating. Oh, thank you, readers. <laughs> and um, it's, like, it's like nothing else in the world. When you do something creative, it makes you so happy. It's true. It isn't it true because creativity comes from your soul. Well, I have found this completely fascinating. And I'm sure <laughs> every one of our listeners have as well. Um, I'm looking forward to... Um, a next year of peace and compassion and ending this year. It'll be your year. You're going to be making headlines. We're going to be reading about you and it's all good. I love that. <laughs> um, well, yeah, Aquarius um, is leading the brigade. And oh, we're I, not that. Um, <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed listening to today's episode. Um, please go to Susan Miller's website, astrologyzone.com. Is that correct? Mm -hmm, okay. Yes. Um, look at all the things that she's coming out with and her calendars, which are absolutely beautiful. And Bloomingdale's is featuring her as well. Um, I think that's pretty exciting. Um, if you like this podcast, um, please like and share it and comment. 
Thank you, Susan. May the angels. Thank protect you for inviting me. I'm oh, you're welcome. Grateful. Thank you. May the angels protect and guide you. God bless everyone until next time. Yeah. Be well.